Good day, EWTN audiences. We're here in Naga City, Philippines, where we have our first mission in the Philippines. And we have as our special guest this morning, the very Reverend Father Ambrose Kulandairaj of Missionaries of the Poor, one of our brothers. Good morning, Father Ambrose. Good morning, Father. And how are you in the Philippines? Fine, really. It's a wonderful place, wonderful people. Uh -huh. uh, yes. And I just love the mission here, you know, uh, among our people, among the brothers. You know, great, great, really great, great, yes. great. You look so healthy, I'm beginning to wonder if this is a mission. Uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you're happy, you know, you feel healthy too, so. Right. Father Ambrose, tell our EWTN audiences when this mission was established and how it developed and why, why are you stressing so much these days children mm -hmm. in our ministries? Could you tell us? Yes, Father. Um, the mission in the Philippines was established uh, back in 1993. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. Yeah by Father Brian, mm -hmm. Brian Carr and Brother Maximo Medina. Uh, you sent those two <laughs> a young, young men no, to right. the Philippines. I remember yes. Father Brian uh, was just ordained, I think, a year before that, mm. uh, two years before that, and he was only 30 years old, and Max was a few years younger. And you sent those two men far out here in the Philippines, and so they started this mission. Uh, of course, with the blessing and the guidance of our dear Archbishop here, Leonardo Legaspi, who has been a tremendous, you know, support, uh, moral support and a real father to us, you know, all these years. So, uh, the mission in the Philippines here in Naga City has been uh, around for over 17 years now. And uh, it's amazing to see the growth that has happened, you know, from nothing and slowly, you know, it has developed, and now we have a large mission here. We have, a, we have an apostolate for the poor, uh, where we have 140 uh, special children and homeless elderly, uh, disabled people, mentally ill. And then, of course, we have a large program with children. Yes, you mentioned about why do we have uh, great uh, stress on ministering to children here in the Philippines. Um, yes, we have a very big outreach here in the Philippines. We have the uh, center, Nazareth Center for Children, uh, which, is, which has many components in it. It's a preschool for children. It has a feeding program for children. It has value education and catechesis for children uh, and so forth. Why do we have a great uh, stress on children here in, in this country, in this mission? First of all, uh, there are many children around, you know. You, it would not be uh, un unusual to find a family here that has seven children or eight children or even more. So you do find that, you know, there are many, many children and they are a joy, really. Children are a joy, a uh, blessing. You know, and uh, would they be a blessing also for these families who have uh, who are so poor mm. and yet they have six or, or seven children? Would they be a blessing for them also? I believe so, Father. You know, <laughs> I mean, uh, yes. You know, you don't want them to have you know too many children and they are not able to you know afford uh, the care. But, you know, children do bring happiness and joy to the family. You have know? you seen that? Here? I have seen that very, very much. I think the Filipino culture is one of the most joyful cultures and people that I have been to. I 
I experienced mm. that myself, you know, and I believe, you know, uh, um, great to a great part, it is the it is because of the children and the love of children that is here, you know, and that brings you know that brings that happiness and People joy. say that uh, that having so many children destroy the quality of life. Uh, that that you would you would certainly want for everybody. That's what is said in the West. But what do you think about that? Well, first of all, I think it depends on what do we mean or how do we define the quality of life. If you define the quality of life purely on a material uh, basis, then surely the more mouths you have to feed, the more stomachs you have to fill, becomes a problem, quote unquote problem. You know. Uh, but if you look at the quality of life as a life that is happy, where there is love, <clears throat> there is uh, the joy, that happiness, uh, I think then you find that children, having children is very essential and important for that kind of quality of life. As I said earlier, surely, you know, you don't want to have, you know, just a sort of, you know, uh, irresponsible, irresponsible yes. But the, there is a way to address that, you know, not to say, no, you should just have one child or two child and then, you know, uh, mm -hmm. all these uh, mm -hmm. uh, attempts now to, to legalize, you know, contraceptives or, or to, to make these contraceptives so readily available that, you know... Uh, that everybody is pra practicing in this in order to prevent right. birth of children. That's right, yes. And I think that will really, really destroy the quality of life here in the Philippines because the quality here is uh, happiness, joy, faith, family, love, friendship, love, and, warmth, love yeah. and which we experience here even as foreigners when you come here you are really almost shocked by the hospitality that is you know that is there and the, the warmth you know? so and the readiness to enjoy very very simple things it seems yes. to me that that uh, we take for granted, uh, you know, in the West, mm -hmm. a lot of people are just locked up in their house all day long. They drive their, mm -hmm. uh, their air conditioned cars, they go to work, they go into their office building, they come out, they drive back home, they're back in their house, they have television. That's right. So you, yeah. materially you yes. have a lot more, but then you have to ask again, is this the quality of life, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, How would you describe quality then, Father Ambrose? Quality of life, I would say, Father, first and foremost, where there is love, because mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. is the very essence of life, love. You know, God made us because He loved us, and He has made us a people of love. So, I would say the first, you know, quality or the measuring rod of the quality of life is where there is love, where there is that sense of acceptance, you know, uh, respect for each person. And even though we are different in our makeup, in our abilities, even characters, that I would define as the real quality and of life. And where there is love, I believe there will be happiness. As we see in our apostolates, you know, in our apostolates, we have children who are deformed. You know, when you see these children, you are sometimes shocked that there are people like, you know, these who have these kind of deformities. And yet they smile. They are happy. Yes, they're and playing happy, with each other. With and they're happy. Yes, they're so yes. happy. And it's not yes. just the brothers. I yes. see people coming mm. to visit and they fall in love with the happiness of these children. So the reason we have so many, such a stress on children is there's a great need here, Father. 
even though the culture uh, has that sense of appreciation for life and for children there is an attempt now to really uh, to to introduce you know foreign foreign uh, mentality foreign thoughts and foreign elements such as such as contraception abortion uh, uh, yes artificial family planning well abortion even though it's illegal here but you can it's happening you know yes, and so you well, can say that it will yeah. be the next step in legalization well you know the whole western culture yeah european union uscid mm. they're pushing it and even enforcing it mm. on the filipino culture is that what you usually tell us misery loves company right right <laughs> they believe that they're happy mm. um the lonely people people uh, in in the west have two children the children go off on their own they live their own lives the parents go off on their own <laughs> uh, they, and what they consider progressive is that nobody needs anybody, anybody. for mm -hmm. anything mm -hmm. and therefore yes. those who are dependent because of their deformities therefore are quote unquote not human beings or they are sort of in a lesser category and therefore they don't deserve to live so now the attempt is to eradicate the poor get rid of the poor is going to backfire because the very ones who think that way and try to eradicate the poor will end up very unhappy will destroy themselves a society that will be self destructive Tell us, uh, for instance, Father Ambrose, the, the, the works for the poor are here, which is wonderful. But I also notice so many vocations. All these, all these young people who, who are coming right. and being drawn to the life. Um, have you found that very, very interesting? So. Well, very interesting, yes. And uh, the, <clears throat> in a way, you may say that, you know, we have a very strict life, a very simple life. We wear our habits. We don't have any personal worldly clothing. Uh, nobody owns anything. We sleep in dormitories. Um, we have a very difficult apostolate working with the poor. The work is very hard. You would think logically that therefore we will attract very few. But what we have found is the opposite. We'll defend our drawing uh, so many vocations and uh, even other communities are surprised you know what is it that draws these young men to us when other congregations are experiencing a real lack of vocations no so 
we really find it's a mystery that so many young people are drawn to our way of life and our community and they enjoy enjoy life you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, i believe again father it is that young people we underrate the young people of our times you know we think that they don't like hard things they don't like to take on a challenge they like a easy way of life but i think that young people really want a challenge even a spiritual challenge like yes. this you know and once they once they catch on to that i think they they are pulled into it uh, in a very strong way so yes you know i find that too often mm -hmm. uh, there's a misconception mm -hmm. that the intellectual life is the is quality it? of life mm -hmm. as a as a mm -hmm. cleric or as a as a religious that mm -hmm. you've got to be brilliant you've got to get degrees and so forth uh, and therefore the intellect is what mm -hmm. is stressed but the heart is forgotten mm -hmm. and i notice um the brothers here are so warm and, mm -hmm. and loving, simple, uh, but also deep. Right. And uh, when you consider the works that they do, people, people are mystified. <clears throat> How do these brothers do this every day? And some of them say reject it and say, mm -hmm. I can't do it and therefore I don't see how they can do it. Mm -hmm. But how would you answer such people? Well, I mean, first of all, we can only be who we are, you know, we, we can just be happy because we are ser <clears throat> serving the poor, taking care of the least, you know, and being with the Lord, being with one another, you know, and so uh, we can only, you know, be who we are. And what happens a lot of times, again, you know, we define quality of life in a material way or an intellectual way, and we see that that only brings about depression, you know. A lot of people are depressed in these uh, in these Western societies. Suicide is, you know, something that is becoming uh, an more option, prevalent. More yes, prevalent. Yeah, you know? yeah, yes, right, and right. that in itself shows that, you know, all of these material prosperity and even intellectual, you know, advancement hasn't satisfied the inner longings of mm -hmm. the human heart, yes, which is yes. really just for love and to be loved. Mm -hmm. And um, I believe that when a person loves and serves others, that is one of the greatest satisfactions that person has. It brings a happiness because it is such an innate thing in man mm -hmm. to, to pour himself out for others. Again, we think that people are happy when you give them things. We believe that young people will be happy if you give them cell phones and iPods and all of these things. But we see it, we see it clearly that that's not bringing them happiness. Whereas when we bring them into this and we show them how to love, how to care for people, as you said, I think when the heart is really involved and formed, they find a fulfillment, you know, yes. even with us. And uh, I believe that is why you know, young people stay with us and they are drawn to our work. Yes. You know what I also find that they are, the, uh, Archbishop uh, Legaspi and, of course, our wonderful uh, Cardinal Rosales Stavis in Manila, um, who sees our works, they, they, they want our work mm -hmm. and they love our work. Yes. And yet, at the same time, uh, others, uh, others in the West are, will criticize us, especially in the West, um, saying that you're loving the people too much, you're spoiling the poor people too much, mm -hmm. and so forth. But um, these men, these author authoritative figures seem to understand the, 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 the treasures of the heart and mm -hmm. the, the beauty of simplicity and, mm -hmm. and poverty and so forth. And then I saw in their coming a concrete, or a concrete uh, way of putting into reality somehow the call of the Second Plenary Council to become Church of the Poor. As I told your community many times, I'm sorry I cannot walk with you in every way yes, of the poor. Yes. But you have to be sure, you have to be assured that I have in my heart the desire to do things mm. to be with the poor because of my other responsibilities. They're so. very, very um, positive about our ministry and they want, you know, they want our ministry because I think these men have a deep vision of God, of what the church is, of uh, the poor. And that's why the Filipino church um, back in 1991 
mm -hmm. uh, declared itself as a church of the poor because they saw that the poor are not a problem but in fact a special gift and a blessing from the Lord. St. Lawrence, you know, back in the history of the church, when he was asked by the government, uh, gov uh, the prefect, to bring the treasures of the church, the wealth of the church, Lawrence brought all the poor. <laughs> oh he said, this is the wealth of the church. <laughs> okay, so yes. I think, you know, yes, these men yes. have a deep vision and they see yes. that, you know. But unfortunately, when we live in a market culture, you know, even human life and person is seen as a commodity for profit. Mm -hmm. And so you take, you know, for example, a person who is crippled, it's like a shoe that is, uh, that didn't come out properly in the factory. What so do you it throw it out? You throw it out. You destroy yes. it even, yes. you know, yes. uh, because it costs more to repair it, to take care of that, mm -hmm. you know. That's the way I think the, the culture now looks at these people. They cost more. They are a problem. But we don't realize that human life is a gift from the Lord. these uh, thousands of children, young, young people, mm -hmm. coming and enjoying a concert with us, enjoying our message about the poor, right. very, very interested in the poor and so mm -hmm. forth. And these are modern young people, mm -hmm. you know. What would you, what would you have to say about, to these young people? And what would you also have to say about Filipinos abroad? Mm -hmm as well as to the Western culture, the culture people. Yes. Well, I would say to the Filipinos abroad and even here is that you have a beautiful culture, uh, so seeped in faith, in love, in family, in friendship. I would say you have something to offer to the world, but please don't lose it. 
because you see other countries, you know, living a materially well-off life, you know, don't fall for that, you know, fallacy. Uh, I believe that Philippines, uh, even though it's in one corner of the world, has some, something to offer to the rest of the world, which is that joy, that love, that family and friendship. Yes, 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 yes. Well, Father, all I can tell you this is what a beautiful mission you have here. Uh, how beautiful the apostolate is. It's our mission, MOP uh, mission, you know. Yes. And uh, I thank Father Brian, Brother Max, Father Charles, and you know, Brother Joe, Big Brother Joe. Yes. Brother Peter, who did all this wonderful this beautiful garden. Beautiful garden. Same yeah. Brother Peter. Yeah. So, you know, we just do yes. our part and uh, just hope that the light will just shine you know, brightly. Right. And, uh, Right. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. yes. Thank you. Uh, I give thanks to God mm -hmm. uh, for this mission and I I give thanks to God for you, Father Ambrose, mm -hmm. and all the wonderful work you're doing, both with the poor as well as with the young people. And we pray that God will increase, increase uh, His grace in you and in the, in the brothers.